Hello and welcome to Theta Sigma's Doctor Who podcast number 85. This week, vision problems in the swim as we review Dark Water. And in the second of our mini-series looking at characters from the black and white era of Doctor Who, we find SSS agent Sarah Kingdom as played by Jean Marsh. Marsh, OBE, was born on the 1st of July 1934 in Stoke Newington in London. She played Sarah Kingdom in the Doctor Who story The Daleks' Master Plan. Prior to that story she'd appeared as Joanna, Richard the Lionheart's sister in The Crusade, and later played Morgane in Battlefield. She also voiced Maria in The Wishing Beast. Outside her appearances on Doctor Who she's best known for creating the television series Upstairs Downstairs with Dame Eileen Atkins, and for portraying Maid Rose Buck in that series. Atkins and she also co-created the 1991 television series The House of Elliot. Marsh made many film appearances, including the fantasy films Return to Oz in 1985 and Willow in 1988, in which she plays similar characters of an evil princess and an evil queen. Around the same time as her appearance as Morgane in Battlefield, she also played Morgana in an American television adaptation of a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court starring the Cosby show's Keisha Knight Pullman. She also played Roz in the original version of the 9 to 5 television series based on the 1980 comedy film, and had a small but significant role in the Alfred Hitchcock film Frenzy. Marsh made many appearances on British and American television programmes during the 1950s and 60s, including The Twilight Zone, The Third Man and UFO. She was once married to John Pertwee, the actor of course who played the Third Doctor. One favourite anecdote of her time playing Sarah Kingdom is of how she used the space pack which was part of her costume to store her sandwiches, as related in a Doctor Who anniversary publication produced by the Radio Times in 1983. Most recently, Marsh has returned to the role of Sarah Kingdom for a trilogy of Big Finish Productions' companion chronicles, including Home Truths, The Drowned World and The Guardian of the Solar System. In 2010, she was also involved in a revival and remake of Upstairs Downstairs, which at one point included Alex Kingston in the cast, though Marsh's involvement was curtailed after she suffered a minor stroke. Marsh has since recovered from that stroke and continues to act, including in Big Finish Productions. She has a cameo appearance as an unidentified BBC staffer in the 2013 docurama An Adventure in Space and Time. Sarah Kingdom was a space security service agent who turned against Mavic Chen, the treacherous guardian of the solar system. With the help of the First Doctor and Stephen Taylor, she defeated Chen and his secret allies, the Daleks. The price of victory was, however, her own life. Sarah had two brothers, both fellow SSS agents, David Kingdom and Brett Vian, the latter of which the Doctor also encountered on Kemble. Trained and efficient, Sarah had the strength of ten men. She was a high-ranking and original member of the SSS, her initial assignment placing her in charge of the organisation's field operations. Sarah, with fellow SSS agents Jason Corey, the humanoid robot Mark Seven, and her brother David Kingdom, encountered the Daleks in a brief confrontation early in her career. Mark Seven wrote a file about the incident, which Mavic Chen consulted 
when he and Brett Vine unexpectedly met Sarah in the year 3999. She was supposed to have been stationed in Venus at that time, and she also received a surprise promotion from Chen at the same time. On Earth the following year she was briefed by Chen and was told that her brother was a traitor. In an experimental testing facility she found the Doctor, Stephen Taylor and her brother, the latter of whom she shot and killed. Sarah would have done the same to the Doctor and Stephen, but all three were accidentally transferred from Earth to Myra by cellular transportation. There she learnt, to her horror and grief, that her unquestioning obedience had not only led her to unjustly kill her brother, but had also prevented Vian from warning Earth of the Dalek plot. Here she joined the Doctor. With Stephen and the Doctor, Sarah took a short, stress-free trip to long-ago Earth. After spending Christmas Day on Earth, Sarah Kingdom and the others spent six months having other adventures, before once more getting involved with the issue of the Daleks and Chen. They visited the year 3999 where Sarah met Vian and had an audience with Chen which finally explained why she'd been promoted in that year. After further travels with the Doctor they came upon a house in Ely that granted wishes. After the adventure a copy of her mind lived on inside it for thousands of years. After that they once more returned to the struggle against the Daleks on several worlds and through several time periods. The Daleks turned against Mavic Chen and killed him. The Doctor had returned to Kemble to activate the Time Destructor to finally stop them. The Doctor then ordered his companions back to the TARDIS for their protection, however Sarah followed him, not knowing the nature of his plan but concerned it might fail. She was caught in the field of the Time Destructor, and, being a human rather than a Time Lord, aged to death. As Stephen and the Doctor watched helplessly, Sarah died, her remains aging to dust. A photograph exists in Unit's Black Archive showing Kingdom standing next to Captain Mike Yates, who was primarily associated with the Third Doctor. The death of Sarah, as well as of their other allies Brett Vian and Katarina, caused Stephen to confront the Doctor about the violence that seemed to follow him everywhere. In his seventh incarnation on the ruined planet of Adiki, the Doctor thought that he'd found Sarah Kingdom, among others of his companions, alive again and desperate to leave in the TARDIS. However, he learned that one of a race of shape-shifting Guazanalum had used his sentiment in order to manipulate him into helping it escape the dead world. Later, while in a hell-like world composed of the Seventh Doctor's mind, Ace met an eerie, ghost-like recreation of Sarah Kingdom among his companions who had died because of him, but Ace didn't recognise her. The copy of Sarah Kingdom's mind left behind in the house in Ely lived on to an age of Earth's history in which advanced technology had become almost non-existent. An academic named Robert befriended her, interested in hearing stories from her past. Eventually he wished to take her places as the entity inhabiting the house, and the alternate Sarah was given a human form as an older woman. Robert drew the TARDIS back to the house and allowed Sarah to choose whether or not to join the Doctor or to remain on Earth. This version of Sarah later joined Stephen, Ian Chesterton, Polly Wright and Nyssa in being abducted by Barusa, utilising a time scoop to an alternative version of the Death Zone on Gallifrey, where she met the Fifth Doctor and once again battled the Daleks as well as the Sontarans. Sarah was by turns aggressive, independent and ruthless in her pursuit of what was right a single-mindedness that blinded her to the larger implications of her orders. Meeting the Doctor changed that, and she turned her formidable skills and intellect to defeat the Daleks. Stephen later commented that he and Sarah had fast become friends over the course of their travels, and that their relationship might have developed further if Sarah had survived. In two recent interviews about her involvement with the character, Jean Marsh has firmly and consistently maintained that Sarah was not actually a companion. Despite this, over time she's come to be regarded as one in official BBC listings, reference works and, most recently, in her inclusion in the Companion Chronicles series. Novelist John Peel established Sarah as having spent at least six months travelling with the Doctor in the continuity of the Target novelisations. Sarah would not be the last character whose status is controversial, and she would later be joined by numerous one-off companions that featured in the 1996 TV movie and post-2005 serials. The DVD documentary Girls, 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 the 1960s, indicates that the character of Sarah Kingdom was inspired by the character of Catherine Gale on The Avengers. Marsh's physical similarity to Diana Rigg 
has led some to erroneously state that the inspiration was another Avengers character, Emma Peel, but Rig had not yet made her first appearance on the series when the serial was in production. Terry Nation planned to feature Sarah Kingdom in an American spin-off series. Had it gone to production, the series would have concentrated on an anti-Dalek task force. Some of the concepts which would have featured in the show appeared in the Dalek Outer Space book. Sarah appeared in the pilot script written by Nation entitled The Destroyers. When plans for the spin-off fell through though, Nation adapted his ideas and characters for the Daleks' master plan. Jean Marsh had earlier appeared in Doctor Who, playing King Richard's sister Joanna in The Crusade. She would return to the programme in 1989 in the serial Battlefield playing Morgane, coincidentally alongside Nicholas Courtney as Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart. Coincidence of course because Courtney had played Brett Vian in the Daleks' master plan. Despite the character's brief tenure, there have been some spin-off works including her. John Peel, who novelised the Daleks' master plan for Target Books, intentionally introduced a gap of several months in his adaptation, into which such stories could be inserted. Most recently, Gene Marsh has reprised the character for three instalments of Big Finish Productions, The Companion Chronicles. These stories take place between instalments of the Daleks' master plan, and reveal that Sarah has survived as an apparition. You will never step inside your TARDIS again. Carter, what are you doing? Time can be rewritten. Clara, my Clara, I don't think you will! You know who I am. I'm not Clara Oswald. Clara Oswald has never existed! <laughs> Come here, you scrumptious little beauty. A box? Doctor, what is it? I've got mail. Feeding back on last night's controversial episode was firstly Jeff Waddell. I'm not bothered about the heaven and hell stuff, although some will be. And I thought Capaldi was brilliant as usual but just thought the story was poor, and it wasn't a surprise who Missy was. Paul M. Blackhurst was next, saying, For a moment I thought she was going to say Romana, but not happy with the reveal, not like Moffat to crush Who history, unless of course she was fibbing. Michael Doyle commented, Very disappointed. Making her the master was cowardly in my opinion. For one brief moment I thought it could be Romana, at the gate where he left her, and K-9 did call her mistress but then it was just a huge letdown. Charlotte Brown said, I liked the start where they were on the volcano, but from the moment that was revealed to be a dream it went downhill. The Cybermen were predictable. I mean, skeletons inside a case in water. Come on. Even I saw that coming and I'm pretty useless at spotting what's going to happen. I feel like enough had been said about Missy. The best bit for her was when she was pretending to be a robot. That would have been cool and would have linked to the Cybermen. Can I take Moffat's place? Sandy Otis de Set said this, Really disappointed. A finale with the same villain as a previous finale. Are they running out of ideas? I love Capaldi as the Doctor, but he can only work with the scripts he's given. I overlooked the repeated lines from past episodes, like in Deep Breath when Clara said the same line as Rose to, Where's the Doctor? He's right here. He's the Doctor. And this has happened multiple times, the recycling of lines from previous scripts. I'm even more disappointed with the Peter episode, Kill the Moon, and the Greeny episode, The Forest of the Night. I don't object to Skyfy instilling new ideas and questioning the accepted norm, that's when it's at its best. But it fails especially when it gets preachy. Viewers aren't stupid, particularly the Skyfy audience. Believe it or not, we already know that killing baby animals is 